They may look a little bit sleepy now, but there are some feisty girls out there, I can tell you. Tell me about it. I've been working with one for 20 years. <laughs> and, of course, it is the girls that do all the hard work. And it takes a man to keep them in control. Oh, yeah. It helps if they're handsome. Well, enough about the lions for now. <laughs> Here's what's coming up on today's programme. <laughs> Will it be despair or glory as young Harry is introduced to his new pride of lionesses? I'm really nervous. <laughs> Jean's doing bath time for an adorable new arrival. Oh, she's got her eyes closed. I remember she's enjoying that. And they say food is the music of love. Bounty! Yippee! But can Kate nourish new romance between two lovelorn emus? No, you're not allowed to fancy the seagulls. She's got no idea. It's a big day for one of the park's best known animals. After his mother and aunt were given the all clear to move to another collection, young poster boy Harry is about to undertake a major rite of passage. The park has 26 lions across three different enclosures. Today, the team are moving Harry to a new one, where they hope this strapping lion can take charge of his very first pride. Senior keeper Caleb's been caring for Harry since he was a little cub. I'm really nervous for him because this is sort of what we've all dreamed of for Harry, is to have his own pride, and so it's been sort of a couple of years in the, in the planning and preparation, so, um, yeah, it's an exciting day for us. Head keeper Amy's in charge of the move. I've got a 200 kilo lion in the back of my trailer at the minute and it's, it's a bit surreal when you think about it really. He's completely taken the whole, whole experience so far in his stride and now off to new things. Amy hopes Harry can unite two groups of warring lionesses who've been without a dominant male for several years. Lions are the only cats that live in groups. Prides can reach 40 individuals. Head of Animal Operations, Darren, is hoping Harry can handle eight. Suddenly he's got to go in and he's got to convince what are some very awkward lady lions that he's boss, what he says goes, but I don't think that's going to come easy. With this new delivery, a change in the social order has arrived. This is your pride rock, isn't it, mate? You right, Harry? I think they've worked out now that there's, there's something in the crate. Um, whether they know it's a male yet or not, um, we don't know. There are clearly pheromones in the air. You're the one, aren't you, Malika? You're the one. You're the boss, aren't you? What do you make of this boy? Drawn to the new arrival, Malika, the dominant female, takes some coaxing away from the lion house to give Harry some space to settle in. Good girl. <laughs> Go, Harry. Come on. Clever boy. He may have the looks, but does this divine feline have the brains and brawn to take charge of a pride of eight feisty lionesses? It's a jungle out there, and there's a long road to becoming king, as Keeper Caleb knows. They've not mixed with a male lion for a long time, and also Harry um, has never been with anyone but his mum and his auntie, um, so it's going to be a bit of a shock. There are no guarantees it's going to be happy families here. Malika, Pepper and Sweet Pea make up the group of three lionesses. Bold, cunning and experienced at handling males, they're known as the Mean Girls. Malika and Pepper are here. Amy sees the opportunity for a quick introduction. Malika's quite interested. Um, we saw that straight away as soon as he turned up. Because he's moved so well, we're just thinking of possibly just bringing her into the house and just seeing what their sort of first reactions are, really. It's a big moment for young Harry. When lions meet for the first time, brutal fights are common. To avoid bloodshed, Amy will introduce Harry to the mean girls through the bars of the house. But to Amy's surprise, 
It's not Malaika that's first to approach. Malaika's actually been a bit wary as soon as we opened it up. It's Sweet Pea. The success of this operation hangs on these very first encounters. Here he comes. Oh, here he is. There he is. Now come right, come right up here. Come right up here. For 20 years now, Kate's been here, forging new relationships. Oh, look, here he is. He's quite a confident little character. So this is Zena. Hello, Zena. She's a little bit nervous. A lot of things going on. Absolutely. New people to meet. And navigating old ones. We're racing along here. You stay still. I'll, I'll do the steering. Don't be patronising, because I haven't seen you for a bit. <laughs> But today, she's been beckoned to assist a pair of star-crossed lovers whose romance is floundering before it's even begun. I've had a call from Gemma over at the family farm. She's got a bit of a problem. She's got two big birds, a beautiful female and a very handsome male. But oddly, they don't fancy each other at all. And she wants me to play Cupid. What on earth am I going to do? The park has four emus. Leggy female Bourbon arrived last year. Hand reared, she's shy by nature and not interested in the mail the keepers lined up for her. It's chaos. Bad Boy Bounty is currently playing gooseberry to the coupled up buttons and biscuit. Bounty's always been hanging around. There's nothing worse than being in a relationship and having that, that third wheel that's always there getting in the way. We didn't actually have any eggs this year, which is a shame. Spare tyre bounty is perhaps a little too desperate for love. You were alone. It all adds up to a matchmaking nightmare for Keeper Gemma. And that's where I come in. Hello, Bourbon. And aren't you beautiful? So you've had quite a lot of problems trying to integrate her with the other three yeah so unfortunately she prefers people which is fine but that's not going to um do anything very much for producing more baby emus is no, it no it's not <laughs> and it's not overly good for her i don't think she's a bit intimidated by them is what i think oh, it is because um, okay. if they go anywhere nearer then she's gone <laughs> now how can she resist him I mean, he's got a fantastic hairdo, a slightly quirky beak. Well, I think Biscuit's more handsome. But... Don't say that. That's probably what the thing is. You've I been know. whispering to her, going, you should fancy Biscuit, yeah, really. Yeah, and she's like, well, I don't really like Bounty. No. Gemma, I know. you've blown it. But you're here. OK, so you want them to skimp away yeah, into, into the, the sunset. sunset. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's exactly what I want. And lucky me, I get to play Emu Cupid. I think we'll give them one of their favourite foods, which is apple. <gasps> the apple of love. Yes. <laughs> it's like the Garden of Eden. Yeah. Um, OK, so she is so determinedly not here. What well, are we going to do? You're going to call them. There's an emu call and you have to go... Yebo! Yebo! Perfect. Like that? Yeah. Yebo! 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 Well done. Ooh, You've got them. It's working. It's working. Yebo! Bounty! Yebo! Come on then, pop it. Yeah, boop. <gasps> Look what I've got for you. Now, uh, uh, now, we're going to share it. It's dinner for two with him. What do you reckon? He's got really good hair. I have to say, your table manners aren't great. So could we maybe work on this? And flutter those eyebrows. Let's see. See, and this is what's going to happen, is Buttons is going to get involved. The arrival of the other female emu has put shy girl Bourbon right off her apple of love. She clears off, so she doesn't stand her ground. Bourbon! Yeeboo! And shoved romance right off the menu. Now you're not allowed to fancy the seagulls. <laughs> She's got no idea. Oh, Gemma, I can see why you're really struggling. It makes you feel quite sad. Yeah. And I, I just think that she would um, benefit from having... Having, having well, a partner, really. Having a lovely, handsome boy like you. I mean, you are, how can she resist you? She's mad, isn't she? Oh, she's I'm, coming back now. Oh, she's she coming, coming back. back. OK. Oh. <laughs> there, go, there goes Bounty. Oh. oh, but look, together. They're going together. He's running towards her. Oh, my goodness. Oh, and she's running completely in the other direction. No, Bourbon, look at him. He's come to see you. So if we let's head over here and okay. then I can shut the other two out. Bounty, come this way. Look, I've got a treat for you. 
She's gorgeous. Come on. Come on, mate. Come on. Off you go. Yee-boo! Oh, hello. Oh, here we go. Come on, then. That's it. Come on. Look. There we are. Oh, it's OK. Look. Look. <gasps> Look. OK, just try and get them a little bit closer. Eating from the same table. Yeah. There, one for him, one for you. <gasps> so, would an emu normally mate for life? They do mate for life. So, if you could make this work, it could be, you know, a love match forever. Yeah. OK. Well, I would say dinner for two was mediumly successful. I think we just need to do more things together. Maybe the next step would be having a bath. What, bubbles and everything? Candles? <laughs> well, that would be nice. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, we want him to be the dominant um, party here. He, he has to come in and show his dominance straight away, otherwise he's going to have no chance taking charge of this pride. In the wild, males may live in groups or alone. They must fight other males to take over a pride and prove their strength. If a pride consists of only lionesses, they can put a newcomer to the test themselves. Harry may be 20% larger, but the lionesses have strength in numbers. There will always be aggression. They have to show the dominance. The male has to show that he is the dominant male. He's not backing down. Strangely, dominant female Malaika is keeping her distance. Caleb thinks it's a tactical move. She's not going to go in there and go all guns blazing. She wants to appease this male, because if she wins him round, and that whatever decision she makes, he will then back up. So she will continue to maintain her top of position in the pride. She's a super smart animal. Though Malaika's holding her cards close to her chest, Amy's really encouraged by Harry's reaction to meeting the first half of the Pride. Even though it was quite vocal, it's actually really good, and, and he's been sort of showing his dominance. He's been shouting at them and <laughs> really had a go at Pepper. After a little time to explore the house, Harry must meet the rest of his prospective new family, including some daughters of the Mean Girls. They're only five and a half years old, None of these five have ever lived with a dominant male before. <laughs> Come on in, girls. Come on. Little E braves it. These inexperienced lionesses are much more on edge. Who is he, Bez? You've got a new man in your life. It's an apprehensive time, obviously, mixing Harry is a huge thing, absolutely huge. We'll just see how it goes, and it's going to sort of be ongoing now for, for a few weeks until we can happily get them together. Next. Harry must meet the girls out in the enclosure. Time will tell, really, to how, how it's going to go. Earlier on, we saw Kate playing Cupid to Bourbon and Bounty, the emus. Now, they didn't hit it off first time, but Gemma the Keeper, never one to give up, has set up a second date. These are the unlikely two. So this is Bounty and here's Bourbon. And as you can see, no squabbling at the moment. It's a very strange job being an emu love guru. I like it though. Um, they, <laughs> oh my finger, you stupid. Ouch. But a bird in the hand is better than two in the bush though, Gemma. This is progress but Bourbon and Bounty's differing demeanours don't make for an easy coupling. She was hand-reared, so prefers humans to emus. Lovely. While he wants to skip the small talk and get straight to business. Bounty hasn't got that, you know, first date thing going on. He just wants to, to get things done. I'm moving quickly and that's just not the way to do it. Don't worry, B. I'd say he needs to grow up and just sort his, sort his life out. Gemma wants to bring them closer together in a cosy bath for two. Let's walk you to the pond. What, oh, Bounty? Come on, you boy. Having a bath together is, um, it just gets them really close to each other without Bounty then trying to fight with her or trying to jump on her back. Very, very normal for emus to have baths. You wouldn't think it, but they are very good swimmers. Come on, emus. Come on, bob on. That normally gets them in the mood.
But Gemma's steamy plan is leaving the emus cold. I don't know what their issue is. So, for the emu love guru, it's back to the drawing board for one last time. In the dating world, sometimes it just, just doesn't work out on certain days, but we will try again. Come on, emus! While it's the last chance saloon for these two would-be lovers, Jean's pitting two species head-to-head -head in a battle of the brains. We've got our very own mastermind contest today in Animal Adventure, but who will be the cleverest? Team captains Georgia and Charlie. Which animals are you backing? Who are we talking about? So I'm going Team Meerkat today. Meerkat? Yep. OK, yeah, good. And I'm going Asian short clawed otters. <sighs> What is the challenge you're going um, to give them? So we're going to go for a feeding challenge today. Okay. So we've got a puzzle feeder here. A bit like a pinball machine going on. Exactly. Yeah. So food at the top. They're going to have to use their hands to work it all the way down. And who is going to be the fastest at getting their food? In this team challenge, it's 11 meerkats versus two short-clawed otters. As soon as each species gets one piece of their favourite food out, Jean will stop the clock. Right, give me this stopwatch. What we're going to do is start with the meerkats first, yep. then we'll go over to the otters. Same thing. Whoever gets the fastest time is the winner. Ready? I'm yep. going to win. Do this. No, you're not. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you two start fight. <laughs> now, Georgia, these guys are so intelligent. They know what's going on. Look at them. They're already interested in the uh, puzzle feeder, so that might be in our advantage. So let's get this in fast before these guys get these grapes off. Yeah. Is it safe? There's a mob forming here. <laughs> what I'll do is I'll keep them over here, Jean. We'll pop them in. Right, do it quick, Georgia, because you know what this mob's like. And we'll block the top because um, they'll cheat. Too easy. Yeah. Ready to call them over? <laughs> I'm going to start my stopwatch, Georgia. As soon as the first one shows a bit of interest. Here they come. Here they come. Stopwatch starting now. Oh, look well, at this guys. guy's straight in there. Oh. And this is what you want to see, isn't it? Them using their brains and their little paws and, and claws as well. Perfect, isn't look it? Look at there them go. go. Look how fast the little hands are going in and out, Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> there oh, we go. He's, he's taking another route. He's going to go underneath. Nothing here for you. It's just a stopwatch. Has anyone retrieved a grape yet? They're working hard. We've got one doing the... <laughs> Trying to get in. Just get inside and grab it. Come Close. on, Mia Cats. Oh, he's hitting it the wrong Getting way. Close. <laughs> <laughs> you want to do this in under a minute? Oh, there you go. Oh. 56 seconds, and he's off of it. <laughs> Not bad, Georgia. Not too bad, yeah. yeah. And I heard lots of noises there. Do you think they're communicating? Yeah, with each so other? they're talking to each other. Um, it's very excitable time. There's food. They're telling each other, oh, we've got to get the food. So a really good example of this is when there's a scorpion around. So they eat scorpions. However, they do have to work together as a team to not get stung by that scorpion. Mm. Well, 56 seconds is going to be hard to beat. Let's head over to the otters. Charlie, how are you feeling? I'm confident. <laughs> Quietly confident over here. What have you got for the otters? So we've got some nice juicy prawns for them today. Delicious. Puzzle feeder is fully loaded. Let's get the otters out and see how they got on. Oh, here they come. Hi, Mish, Somali. So how will they know there's food here? They should use their noses. They Ooh. are very, very nosy. So anything that's different oh. in their enclosure, they yeah, want they to know right what it away. is. They've spotted it. Right, they've spotted it. They're at the stopwatch starting now. Yep. <laughs> now, they're definitely interested, Charlie, yep. so that's good. Look, they're thinking about it. They're really mm, thinking. The hand has gone straight yep. in after seven seconds. I wasn't sure the fingers would fit, but they've has done pretty got well. That? They nearly. almost put all your they nearly did it. took it in seven seconds. And a completely different approach. Very they, different. You know, they're giving each other space and respect. Yep. <laughs> the meerkats were not doing that. It was each to their own. Yeah, <laughs> they actually quite often... He's got one. He got stop, it. Stop, stop. 25 seconds. Yes. <laughs> that really trumps the meerkats. Much better. Wow. So how are they using this intelligence in the wild? So they have to hunt in murky waters. Um, they also have to get into some really tough prey, um, things like shellfish, and they've even been known to use tools like stones and things like that. I mean, that is pretty amazing, Charlie, and very dexterous as well. Oh, he's And now he's trashing the joint. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty pleased. Well, Clever little things. We've seen it right there. In the battle of intelligence, otters win by yeah. far.
cat team is continuing with the introduction of Harry to the lionesses in the hope that he's got what it takes to rule a brand new pride. Now he is about to meet some of the girls for the first time without the protective bars of the lion house in the way. Are things, including Harry's gorgeous face, about to get ugly? Go on Harry, good boy! Caleb's been looking after Harry since he was a cub. Yeah, I'm really nervous. He could really take a dis dislike into one of them, or they could take a dislike into him, and then potentially some real serious injuries. Lions weigh up to 200 kilos, with 30 teeth. Their canines are up to 10 centimetres long. Longleat lions have the same killer instincts as their wild cousins. Harry will meet the five youngsters first. Any lioness is not to be underestimated as head of animal operations, Darren knows. It's really the female lions that are built for the killing, the attacking, the bringing down prey. Bearing that in mind, when you're gonna mix a male lion into that environment, by goodness, you've gotta watch it because these females are incredibly feisty. You know, they are killing machines and if Harry gets it wrong or we get it wrong, it could be fatal for Harry. So we've gotta play it very carefully. All systems go. Man, Hannah, if you just keep him on that fence line, that's perfect. The team have four Jeeps on standby to head off any trouble. Harry steps into the drive through for the very first time. Ooh, go on, mate. He's nearly there. Harry's out. So here we have Harry in the drive through Harry has a few minutes to explore before the girls are released. Yeah, that's fine, Amy. Let him go. These five youngsters are only five and a half years old. So he's coming over to say hello. Seeing Harry inside the house, they were extremely skittish. <laughs> They've never lived with a pride male before. So Lily's he's the one closest to us on the fence line and she's really excited to get in with Harry. Harry will meet a couple of the lionesses at a time. Brave little E and timid Beryl are first. They're out, they're out, they're out, they're out. So we've got two lionesses out in the drive through um, So now they're face to face with Harry, basically. So now it's the, the moment of truth. So he's chasing Lily. He's very nervous and he's very quick and big. Obviously, he's going to go and rub heads with her now. It's thought that nuzzling establishes and reinforces social bonds. This alliance is a work in progress. This is natural behaviour. This is him just telling them off. They outnumber him, so what he's trying to do is tell off each lioness individually and make them fully respect him and fully understand what he's capable of so that when they all come out, they don't get that gang mentality of beating him up. So he's already got these two to, to lie down whenever he walks near them and to respect him, so he's, he's got the desired effect. The team release the rest of the youngsters. His attitude's changed because there's actually five lionesses outside now and I think even he's thinking, oh, maybe I better not get on the wrong side of these girls. What are you doing, big lad? Are you worried now, mate? Are you worried? I would be. Yeah, he's basically starting to realise that he's not, it's not going to be quite as easy as he thought. Oh, Bessie, well done. In the scrap, Harry gets a wound on his back right leg. It's a, bit, it's a difficult position for him because he's got to be the ultimate charmer, but also be a fighter and aggressive and sort of ultra masculine, but then be, you know, super sensitive towards them as well. Well, you can see him, he's a bit lost at the moment. He's kind of like, hmm, what do I do next? It's hoped that if Harry can find that sweet spot between macho and sensitivity, he can unite this pride of five lionesses with the feisty three elders known as the Mean Girls.
one of the best things about today is these girls didn't always get along, so the three and the five, hence why they were split down the middle. But now that we've put Harry outside, they're all sat against the same fence line. They've all been out to protect each other. Um, and that's a fantastic sign for us. That is the reason we brought him in here, to unify these girls. There's no animosity, there's no aggression. There's one common enemy, which unfortunately at the minute is Harry. If Harry's body and pride have taken a beating from the youth club, how will he fare when he comes face to face with the meanies? Fearsome or friendly, new encounters are all part of growing up. Jean's gone to help with a much gentler first for an exciting new and eating arrival in Animal Adventure. This is Bella, and oh. Bella is Moroni's baby. She's only three and a half months old. Oh, she so is so precious. Look yes, at her. She is. I remember giving Maroni a bath last summer and she loved it. She was rolling around in the mud, you know, she was really having a good scratch at the same time. But how do you think Bella will react? It's going to be interesting. Right. I, I'm not 100% sure. Um, okay. as, as you know, her dad hates water, whilst Marie loves water. Mm. So is she going to be more like dad or is she going to be more like mum? Oh, that, we're going to find out, aren't we? So what are we going to do? Are we going to shower her while she's on mum's back? Yes, so we're going to start off really lightly and Good we're going idea. to mist some water over her mm -hmm. just to see how she reacts and get a feel for it. Right, OK, let's get started for it. We'll see if we can get her to come over. Maroni, come on, come on, Maroni. Good girl. This will be our first bath. A little bit of mist. There you go, girl. Oh, Mum likes it. <laughs> Mum's interested. <laughs> Come on, little Bella. <laughs> there you go, Bella. Oh, she's oh, got she's her eyes closed. Her eyes closed. So she's enjoying that. How much longer will Bella be on Mum's back? So baby auntie does usually stay on mum's back for anywhere up to about four months. Mm -hmm. um, in that sort of last month, they're going to start coming off and exploring. Bella's already started doing that. Good. Um, and then she'll start to walk alongside mum rather than being on mum's back. And she'll start to be a bit more independent. Get a little bit onto her tail. She hasn't jumped off and run away. So no, that's she good. hasn't. Anteaters love water. And in the wild, they'd go and bathe in, in, in rivers and, and watering holes. Unfortunately, because we've got a baby, it means we only can't have her pond because baby anteaters can't swim. So there is the risk that she would fall into the pond. Mm -hmm. So that is why we're showering her. But, but as soon as baby's old enough and is able to swim, she'll have her pond back and she can do it all by herself. I've got a feeling she really likes this. And I take it it's good for skin conditions as well. Anteaters are notoriously flaky. They have, oh, right, okay. They have very dry skin, um, so it is important go, to have a bath every now and again. It's nice to see that she's enjoying it. Mm. It's, uh, I'm very proud of her. What a brave little anteater. And I mean, she's so cute, Alessandra, but she's going to grow up and be just as ferocious as mum and dad. She is. They are incredibly dangerous. Uh, they are capable of killing a jaguar in the wild, to give you an idea of how strong mm. they are. And these huge claws, so that they can rip into termite mounds and, and they can also do a fair amount of damage as well. And obviously mum will be even more protective when she's got a youngster. She, she is protective, but she is an incredibly good animal. We do a lot of training with her, so that she allows us to get close to the baby and she knows that nothing bad's gonna happen. But if she were a wild anteater, I can assure you it would be very different. Well, you know, I think Bella's really enjoyed this shower. Now I think we'll give mum some too. Give mum some too. There you go, Maroni. Good mum. Back now to Harry, Here we go in. Good boy. who's about to be mixed outdoors with the ferocious mean girls. Today is definitely Harry's biggest test because these are the three big girls. We're going to get Harry out in the drive through and then we're going to let the girls out one by one. Come on then, sweet. Like a gladiator, Harry enters the arena. Good boy. Just be ready. Closely followed by the Meanies, a terrifying trio. Because Malika's kind of the matriarchal lioness, we're going to let her out first. She's just posturing towards her. Good girl, Malika. She's super intelligent, very smart, very agile, um, and she's kind of plays her cards close to her chest. Sent Mark yep. straight away as well, so obviously he's uh, 
He's very confident. Don't threaten her too much. You won't like her when she's angry. Then we've got Sweet Pea, who's very big, very bolshy, very aggressive, but not quite as smart as Malika. Sweet Pea's out now, John. And then we've got Pepper, who's sort of the unknown. Um, she's quite clever, she's quite big. Good girl. Well done, Pepper. So obviously these three girls, they mean business. He's got to win all three rounds and impress all three, so it is a big test for him. Caleb and Amy stand by to break up a bloody standoff as Harry approaches the three meanies. Oh, <laughs> he's actually quite, he's trying to be quite sweet. It's perfect, isn't it? It's incredible. Just watching him roll over. <laughs> but then the mood changes. Oh, here comes all three girls now. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. He's got to hold his nerve, because if he bottles it... Malika's going to go for his back end. Oh. Ah! Oh, dear. Led by savvy Malika, the lionesses target Harry's rear, where there are no teeth. Harry's best option is to retreat. He's got to hold his nerve. The mean girls know how to work as a team to put Harry in his place. It was Sweet Pea and Pepper at the front end, and then Malika rolled him over from the back. So it's that sort of clever, devious side of Malika that we we've seen, really. It doesn't seem to have any wounds on him. He's like, oh, that's a bit much. <laughs> He's just wanting a few minutes to re reassess what's going on and, and have a, a different attack, I think, next time. Harry's personal pride has taken a beating, but what next for his new pride of lions? There's always a possibility that we will have more fights and, and fireworks. Anything could kick something off. He'll, he'll properly snap one day. He's choosing to actually be dominant, but not fighting at the minute. But when he does get angry and he charges in, you know, he could throw lionesses left, right and centre. He's incredibly powerful. He could do some serious damage to the girls. Can Harry assert his dominance without tearing the pride apart? We'll follow Harry's unfolding story across the series. Matchmaker Gemma's not giving up on love. Morning, Just made the emus beds for tonight, uh, their little love nests. So we're going to call them down and uh, leave Bounty and Bourbon together for the night. This love doctor's hoping a romantic soiree will get these lovebirds all of a flutter. We're going to offer them some starter, and then they're going to have a main course and then a dessert, and then it's bedtime. Come on, Mimi's. Come on, Bourbon! And now, alone at last, the moment of truth for Bourbon and Bounty. Bourbon is worried um, about being this close to Bounty, only because, you know, he's not overly gentlemanly with her. He just wants to mate her. Um, not even bought her any flowers yet, bless him. It's OK. That's it, be nice to him though. You're fine, you're okay. Right, here he comes, Bobs. Let's just be calm, be calm. That was really nice. She didn't chase him, he didn't chase her. Before Gemma leaves them for the night, she's prepared one last aphrodisiac snack. Well, I made them a cake for their first night together in hope that it would uh, start the romance 
like a nice meal. Mm -mm. Well, girl bird Bourbon's keen. She's loving it. Come on, B. And here comes lover boy. Yes, yes, yes. Oh no, bounty. You know, you could be the most attractive man on earth, the richest man on earth, buy you chocolates, flowers every day. She's going to eat it all, Bounty. But sometimes the spark just isn't there. Gemma, the story of Bourbon and Bounty. Yes. You tried the matchmaking, I tried the matchmaking. So why do you think they just don't fancy each other? Well, I've had my suspicions for a while now, and I am sort of coming to the terms that Bounty might not be a he. Ah, <laughs> oh, OK. That That's... would be a problem with <laughs> breeding. <laughs> yeah, it really would. Well, it's not such a mad thought, is it? Because they do look very similar, don't they? I mean, it's yeah. very difficult to tell them apart. They are. And with Bounty's behaviour um, over the last few years, we have seen him trying to make the other female yeah um so it was a sort of fair assumption to make it was yeah. yeah and i actually because of those suspicions we got feather testing done and it turns out bounty's a girl and what about bourbon? bourbon bourbon's a girl they're oh! both girls <laughs> yeah yeah i mean you know they can still love each other just, of course just just in a platonic way yeah, yeah and not have my babies yeah my they could husband. adopt <laughs> <laughs> they could. So what happens now? Because Biscuit and Buttons are paired up. Yes. They're, they're in love and that's fine. Yeah. So is the ideal for you to find a handsome chap that is definitely a chap to try and woo Bourbon and Bounty? Definitely, yeah. I think the next step would be to find the most handsome male on the planet and um, woo these two lovely ladies. Yeah. I really would. Yeah. Yeah. So there you go. If you are male and emu and looking for love, you know where to come. <laughs> In the meantime, here's what's coming up on the next Animal Park. Catching a feathered runaway without risking life and wing. We don't want him to get too stressed. Birds that get stressed can die. The gym secret, wow, of a seriously ripped reptile. See him just transformed to a really fast respondent killer? Yeah. And a devastating blow for one of the park's most fragile creatures. She is a little low on kidney score. This is a massive alarm bell for us. 